My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Well, Jesus, on account of this being a special feast day today, we want to use our imaginations to pray and to imagine that we are in Nazareth and that we are preparing to celebrate this feast day with you and with your mother. One day, a traveller was making his way into the village of Nazareth. It had been a long journey that had begun in Jerusalem some six days beforehand. He was tired from his journey, and as he made his way into the hill country, he was relieved that this was to be his resting place for the day. Though not quite as hot as the summer, the air was still a little dry, and he was keen to slake his thirst at the little well on the top of the hill. He had always found Nazareth to be a friendly and a welcoming place, and there was a serenity in the air that day in particular. As he arrived at the well, he tied up his little donkey and threw his few possessions under the large oak tree, and relieved by the shade, he sat down for a few minutes before drawing some water. The little birds overhead were singing so sweetly, he thought to himself, yes, how good it was to be back in Nazareth. It was a little town, and though he had passed through it several times throughout the years, he didn't really know anyone who lived there, but he never had a problem finding lodgings. He sat in the shade and sipped the cool, refreshing water which he had filled his skin with. A few moments later, three women approached the well, laughing and chatting. They were indeed in a very joyful mood, so much so that their happy countenance made the traveller smile. Shalom, they said to the traveller, sitting beneath the oak tree. Welcome to our village. Thank you, he replied. It's good to be here. Have you come from afar? From the holy city, he replied. Have you found lodgings? We are preparing a feast and we have so much to share with you if you'll join us. The traveller had spent so long on the road in his own company that he didn't really feel like celebrating a feast. Besides, he thought he would feel a little awkward at a feast with people he didn't know. So having thanked them for their kind offer, he politely excused himself. Since these women were in such good form and had been so kind, he reached into his bag and produced from it a little sack of dates. Take these for your feast. I just picked them a few days ago. Though they were quite insistent that he should share in their feast because of this little act of generosity, he again politely refused and wished them well. Having drawn the water in their jars, they bade him farewell and headed off back into the village. The traveller continued to enjoy the afternoon shade beneath the large oak tree, so much so that he dozed off for some time. He awoke to the gentle hee-hawing of his little donkey, slightly discomfited by the surprising nap he had just enjoyed. He gathered up his sink things and headed into the village to find a place to stay for the evening. He made his way down the hill to a place where he had stayed before, just on the outskirts of the village. He banged on the door and waited for a few minutes. When no one answered, he banged again, but he was left waiting outside. Oh dear, he thought, I'd better try somewhere else. Well, there was that other place on the other side of the village, not quite as nice and rather hot in the evenings, but it was better than nothing. Come on, donkey, on we go a little further. He passed some children who came skipping along the street. Shalom, shalom, they said as they went whizzing past him. Indeed, they seemed very cheerful just as he was becoming a little anxious at not finding anyone at the inn. He arrived at the second house. It was a little dilapidated, but it was better than nothing, and the door was slightly ajar. He tied up the donkey and made his way into the little courtyard. A man came to greet him. Shalom, friend. How can I help you? Shalom. I'm looking for somewhere to stay here this evening, just one night, and I'll be making my way tomorrow. I'm terribly sorry, said the man. We have no more rooms. Some people have called for a feast, 
Uh, maybe you could try my cousin's house. It's it's up near the well, and it, it has a little olive tree growing over a stone wall. Tell them Shimon sends you with his blessing. Having thanked the man, he untied the donkey and made his way back up the hill towards the well. He was getting quite tired now and also hungry, and the thought of having to trudge back up the hill made his heart sink a little. Slowly, they wind their way back up towards the well, towards the innkeeper's brother. When he turned the final corner, his heart sank. The olive tree was indeed growing over the stone wall of the first house he had tried, and the door was still closed. Where was he going to spend the night? Nazareth was not a big town, and he had already tried the only two places that he knew. Making one last desperate attempt, he banged the door and waited, but no one came. He was quite thirsty now and very hungry, and he decided to go the short distance back up the well to refill his water. Having drank a good gulp from the well, he sat down and really began to panic about where he was going to spend the night. It wasn't that safe to be outside, he said to himself. There could be bandits or wild animals, and he was absolutely famished. Just then, a man came to the well, accompanied by a few other men. Shalom, he said to the traveller. Come, my friend, come and join our feast. The traveller was so surprised by the stranger's words that he sprang to his feet and said, Do I know you? The man smiled and said, I too am a fellow traveller, and I see you looking laboured and overburdened. Come and rest a while and refresh yourself. Today is my mother's birthday, and you will be our honoured guest. He literally could not refuse such a gracious offer, but he felt a little embarrassed nonetheless. The stranger took the man's little bag, and one of the other men untied the donkey as they chatted and made their way back down the few streets into the village. They arrived at a very simple house that was beautifully decorated for the feast. Flowers and branches were across the threshold of the doorway, and the smells of roasted lamb and spices wafted in the air as he could hear singing and merriment over the wall. As the traveller made his way across the courtyard, he saw the women from the well he had met earlier. We're so glad you could come. Welcome. The traveller felt like royalty, but even more embarrassed when he saw the woman whose kind invitation he had previously refused. They made their way into the room just off the courtyard, which had been set for a sumptuous feast, when a woman arrived out wearing a beautiful blue scarf and a long red tunic with little purple flowers embroidered upon it. My son, she exclaimed, and you've brought more friends to your mother's house. The traveller realised, as the woman was speaking to her son, that he no longer felt that uncomfortable, in fact, quite the opposite. He felt relieved to be in such a happy home and very contented by the warm welcome he had just received. They took their seats on the floor around the table to begin the feast. The traveller sitting to the right of the woman in the place of honour. There were about 20 people crammed into the room and the atmosphere was just lovely. When they finished their meal, one of the ladies stood up and said, Mother Mary, we have a special treat for your birthday. At that, one of the other ladies came into the room carrying a simple tray in her hand. She came up and placed it before Mary and said, Mother, here are some fresh dates brought to you by your friend. Mary turned to the traveller and said, Thank you, my son, for your most beautiful gift. The traveller was speechless at Mary's incredibly sincere gratitude, and he muttered, but, but, but they're only so small compared to the great feast that I have enjoyed and the warm welcome that I have received on your birthday in your house. Mary took his hand and said, as my son says, the little you do for your brother and sister will be rewarded. To this, her son replied, today is the birthday of my mother. You have shared our joy and you are always welcome in this house. Today the church celebrates the birthday of your mother, Jesus. Help all of us travellers to honour her today 
by the love that we share to one another, no matter how small. And may we always find a welcome in her home whenever we are in need. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.